Arturo Perone was born in 1921 and raised in the East New York section of Brooklyn. He would later relocate to Howard Beach, Queens. Perone was a veteran inducted member of the old Vito Genovese family. He served under Antonio Tony the Sheik Carrillo and Michael Miranda, top bosses of the Neapolitan faction of the Brigada. In later years, Perone served under Capo Matty the Horse Ainello until Ciro became an acting captain himself with Ainello's ascension in the hierarchy. Ciro had a club foot all his life and wore an elevated shoe. It is believed to have been the result of a childhood accident. Over the years, he owned several businesses, including Ciro's Luncheonette at 698 Liberty Avenue and several bars in East New York. He also had a hidden interest in the famed Don Pepe Italian restaurant in Ozone Park, Queens. In addition, he owned a private social club off 101st Avenue in Ozone Park for many years. This social club was Ciro's pride and joy. He was a collector of old and odd antiques, which he went out of his way to acquire and put on display all around the club. A good example was a six-foot-high carved wooden Indian displayed prominently as you walked in the front door and a signed autograph of Al Jolson, who was an American singer, comedian, and actor. He had so many other interesting conversation pieces, too, including trumpets, signed baseballs, and so forth, that it was like a museum. A mob museum per se, but a museum nonetheless. His close associates over the years included Michael Perone, his dear brother and a member, Michael Mike Miranda, a longtime consigliere to Vito and top Neapolitan boss who was close to Ciro, Anthony Tony the Sheik Carrillo, Ciro's closest associate and a capo, Salvatore Sal the Sheik Carrillo, Tony's brother and a member, Bernie Miranda, Mike's nephew and a member, Frank Frankie Camp Campione, a cousin through marriage and a Colombo member, Pasquale Fat Patty Catalano, a Colombo member and a personal friend, Salvatore Bay Vario, Paul's brother, a Lucchese member and Ciro's partner years ago in alcohol tax bootlegging, Anthony Tony Lee Guerreri, an East New York alumni and schoolmate, and a Gambino member. Ciro Perone was the right arm too and highly trusted by Tony the Sheik for decades. Ciro was known as a knife man and was alleged to always have had a knife on him. If having a beef with Ciro, you were always advised to stay off him several feet so as not to be close enough to get shivved if the argument escalated. In 1940, a 19-year-old Ciro was one of several young hoods arrested, tried, and convicted for a payroll holdup. One co-defendant of Ciro's was Vincent Tappy Soviero, who'd go on to fame as a Genovese narcotics dealer. Ciro was sentenced to seven and a half to 15 years in state prison. The courtroom went berserk when the judge had the balls to hold Ciro's elderly mother in contempt of court for crying and pleading with the judge to spare her 19-year-old son from prison. When the judge had her arrested in the courtroom and jailed for the 30 days for contempt, Ciro went nuts, cursing and calling the judge a cocksucker and threatening to cut his balls off. Can you blame Ciro? The judge was obviously a piece of shit to jail his mom for crying and pleading for her son, something any loving mom would do. And considering Ciro loved his knives, we're sure he meant every word he threatened. In 1963, Porco Pork Corporation was a meat wholesaler in Jamaica, Queens, grossing $500,000 a year. The president earned $200 a week. He hired Perone and Carrillo at $250 a week each as truck spotters and Carrillo's brother Sally at $250 a week as a sauce maker. Law enforcement authorities publicly exposed this arrangement as a typical example of business infiltration by the Genovese mob. In later years, Prone got indicted with Inello, Spike Bernstein, and other mob figures for a wide-ranging RICO conspiracy involving labor extortion, embezzlement, infiltrating a bus union local, shylocking, gambling, etc. The usual mob stuff. He was later convicted after trial 
and received a five-year jail term. Even though Ciro was already well into his 80s, he served his jail term with his chin up, eventually made parole, and shortly thereafter passed away in 2011 at the comfortable old age of 90. Although he sometimes could be a bit crusty and rough around the edges, Ciro was a real good guy, a devoted mafioso, and a very loyal friend if he liked you. Rest in peace, Ciro. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Mob Fireside Chat presented by Button Guys of the New York Mafia. And don't forget to comment and let us know your thoughts about Ciro Perone or any of our other mob tales. You can also visit the New York Mafia.com and indulge yourself in many more tales of the underworld. Until next time.